Market Sale in Nigeria. And joining us this morning to look at uh, this issue uh, is the face that is known on AIT, uh, Moneyline with Nancy Iniapabio, uh, Group Managing Director of Nanet Group, and the Chairman of Aquaibom State Hotel and Tourism uh, Tourism Board. That's the new uh, okay. office that has been added to Ini. Ini welcome to Moneyline. <laughs> Thank <laughs> nice you. This morning. Uh, also joining us is Dr. Abdullahi Mohammed. Dr. Abdullahi Mohammed is the Head of Department of Public Administration at the Nasser State uh, University and also the Deputy Dean Faculty of Administration. Dr. Abdullahi, nice to have you on the program this Thank morning. Thank you for having me on the program. All right, let's, let's start with INI. Uh, mixed reactions uh, uh, you know, has trailed the decision of government to sell some of you know, public assets. Uh, what, will be your, what, what, what is your reaction or what, how do you see these action you know, that is to be taken by government? Yeah, it's, um, it's very interesting, but you see, we, we need to look at the action of the government vis-a-vis -a, -vis a lot of dynamics that um, affect what the government wants to do. Um, there are many aspects to it. First of all, what are the assets that need to be sold? Mm. What have these assets added to us as a country? So that's just an aspect of it. The second aspect is when you sell these assets, what will the money be used for? Is it for recurrent e expenditure or for capital expenditure? And then the third aspect is that are there more efficient ways of maybe financing the budget outside the sale of the assets? I in other words, have we tried everything possible, like even making sure um, the, the budget itself is efficient, the budget itself um, is not a, a, a frivolous or extravagant budget, and so on and so forth. So when you look at these issues, um, a lot of persons become apprehensive because our government has not have um, a history of being very efficient in taking these kind of decisions. Um, when governments in Nigeria take this kind of decisions, one, they normally may sell the wrong assets. Mm. Two, they may undersell the assets, especially to their cronies. Mm. And secondly, these assets will be used to fund non-future uh, profit generating uh, ventures. Mm. So what we now look at is, well, if you sell the assets, fund whatever you want to fund, the next budget are we going to have enough budget, uh, sorry, assets to keep selling? Yes. Mm. And then, uh, very lastly, uh, on the positive side, uh, while we are looking at some of these assets, we should not lose sight of the fact that any government and any enterprise keeps having new assets. Mm. And so, even if you are a, a business person, a conglomerate, a corporate body, or pr private sector, or even public sector, there's always a time you may have to sell off assets. Uh, it's just the reason you're selling. That's, that's what really we are looking at now. Yeah. Now, let me bring in Dr. Abdullahi. He has made, he has made mention of a, load of a whole lot of factors, value of the assets, what are, what are the funds recovered from the assets you're going to be used for, and also the budget efficiency. I want you to also react to this move of the government to sell assets. Are, we going to, are, we, are there more negatives than positive to this move? Yes, I want to believe there are more negatives. Government is a continuum. But in Nigeria, we haven't got it right in terms of sustaining whatever policies we put forward for the Nigerian people. Some times ago, we decided we were going to privatize. We privatized some national assets. Mm. If you look at the, uh, uh, the, those um, enterprises privatized, they have not been operating at uh, optimal, optimal mm. level. Mm. Let me take the case of the Transcorp. When you sell a hotel like, Trans, like uh, the old um, Hilton. Hilton, you will expect that 10 years going forward, it will be able to establish more hotels across the country. We haven't seen that. Even within the poor view of Abuja City, that Transcorp hotel cannot be said to be a model in hotel um, uh, management, in, in service provision. And therefore, it's got to show that there are no technical 
analysis, financial analysis, in giving out this um, asset or enterprise to whoever is given to. Then, more so, what assets are we going to sell? Based on analysis, uh, experts are looking at NLG, then general liquefied, liquefied natural gas. Yeah. We're looking at the NNPC. We're looking at uh, maybe assets like the Wari refinery, the Kaduna petrochemical, mm. and the rest of them. Now, as if you look at this block of um, corporations or assets, they have contributed significantly to the economy. Now, if you want to sell them, what percentage are you selling? Who are you selling to? What is the te technology or the capacity addition that the investors are bringing onto the table? Mm. These are issues that have to be resolved. And more so, asset belongs to the Nigerian people. Are you taking it to the floor of the Nigerian Stock Exchange? Are you just um, sitting uh, around the corner and giving it out to a few individuals, just like my uh, colleague here mentioned? Mm. Now, unless certain issues like that are addressed, you now discover that the issue of the sale of the asset cannot be accepted by the Nigerian people. Since government policies are supposed to address issues for the public, then too, just like he said, if you sell these assets today, what assets are you going to sell tomorrow? Yeah. And at the same time, they are saying we are selling this asset to begin to um, establish rail lines, yes. more assets, more assets. Yeah. So if these assets are important, why sell them? Why don't we look at the fiscal discipline? Mm. Why can't you begin to be um, more serious about how we manage our budget rather than sell what you have, finance the budget, go borrowing, finance the budget? It can never take us anywhere. Mm. It will take us anywhere. All right. Uh, Ine, the question would be, is this the right time to actually talk about you know, selling assets? <laughs> That's a very good question. <laughs> it's a controversial time. I wouldn't know about it being right or wrong. Uh, but the timing um, creates a lot of controversy. It's controversial because, one, we are on the eve of an election. Yes. Two, we are on the eve of a change or a continuation of a government. Oh. Mm. And so uh, when you sell assets and a lot of money comes in, uh, because of the uncertainty of uh, continuation, uh, those monies could be mismanaged. And uh, so for a lot of persons, there is the thinking that whatever assets would be sold after due diligence, it should be done after the elections by whatever government of the day will be in place at that time. Because then that government has got four years of planning. It also has the capacity to fully utilize, implement the budget, do whatever it wants to do with the money. And of course, there's always the fear that uh, some of this uh, uh, money is realized, may be used for the elections. Mm -hmm. You see, and because we are looking, look, like I told, told you, are we selling capital assets to finance um, recurrent expenditure, like uh, uh, maybe our electoral yes. process? Yes. I mean, that, that will not yield any dividends in the future. If, if you do that, uh, can we sell that in the future? We cannot. Mm. It's something that has been utilized. So uh, these are the, so the, the, the timing is, uh, is a bit problematic. It is, it is really. And even the timing is not just problematic that we are thinking, will we also have a good price? Because people coming will be finding it out. Ah, mm, do we buy yeah. yes. or do yes. we hate? Yes. Uh, what's the continuity of this uh, government? Uh, and general know, volatility, so yes. volatility surrounding exactly. elections. Exactly, it's yes. too volatile. Like we already seen time. in it's capital markets and all yes. of those things. You know. That's what I'm looking at. So no. it's a controversial time to sell. Still staying with you, I was reading an article and the writer of that article stated that the Nigerian people has lost confidence in the political system in the country, considering the level of poverty we have in the country. Do you think, it, is it wrong for Nigerians to be apprehensive over some policies such as this? It is, it is very right for Nigerians to be apprehensive. Just like I've mentioned, we must look towards the future using the historical aspects of our country. Uh, a lot of our governments have not been up to par in transparency, 
in doing the right thing, in execution yes. of whatever they want to do. And so whenever something comes up, like what I said at the beginning, selling um, public uh, assets is not really bad. Many countries do that. Uh, Saudi Arabia, yes, uh, Saudi Kuwait. Aramco, yes. But what are the reasons you're selling? Is it to improve efficiency? Is it for long-term benefits? Is it for creation of uh, greater technological advancement in those areas or bringing money? You know, but what we are looking at is the reason for the sales are not um, very much um, as transparent as the Nigerian society would like to look at it. So uh, we, we should not blame Nigerians for being suspicious of their governments, <laughs> apprehensive of the cells, and then you may have a lot of negative reactions to what they are trying to do. All right, Dr. Abdullah, you are a public administrator. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, let me find out from you, now, based on what you <laughs> teach in class, uh, what you tell uh, you know, people who in terms of public mm -hmm. governance, what would have been, you know, the easiest way out if you were to look at this issue as a public administrator who is managing you know, the public? It's proper management of the, uh, of the resources of the country. Uh, let, me, let me draw uh, an example. You see, she mentioned Saudi Aramco. Saudi Aramco, though it was established fairly earlier than our NMPC, mm -hmm. uh, initially it was partly owned by some investors from the U.S. and then the Saudi government. But since around the 1980, the Saudi government took, 100, took over 100 percent ownership of the company. Not only that, between 1985 to date, Saudi Arabia has been able to the Saudi Aramco to, to go about offshore investment into uh, oil, oil refineries in Texas, in Singapore, in recently South Korea, and, and recently even in Europe. So what are we seeing? It is a result of proper management so that when you manage your, your, your asset properly, you'll have access to manage your fiscal uh, aspect of the economy and then go about investment. Mm -hmm. You see, if you look at the G GCC countries, the Gulf cooperating countries, what they have on ground is a policy that bar foreigners from buying their, their landed properties. Mm -hmm. If you want to do pr uh, business there, you have to either uh, synergize with a citizen of the country or you are just giving on lease. Nobody sell any asset to anybody. The asset belongs to the people of those countries. And that is why their, their living standard, the indices is showing that they're getting better. Ours is getting worse. So Niger Nigerians will have to be apprehensive. You don't need to sell. Look at loopholes and manage. S same on the Sunday, Sunday Aramco uh, we're talking about. Recently they deployed a technology whereby they can be able to monitor all their oil fields, all the pipelines within the kingdom. Safania oil field is the largest offshore oil field in the world. But they can be able to monitor tankers uh, um, onshore and offshore and be able to say significantly this is the amount of oil being extracted, being transported. In Nigeria, a common tanker that leaves a debut in Wari can maybe may, may disappear within a tinkle of an eye and nobody can give account to. Mm -hmm. So if you decide, for instance, the energy, what I've read is that they intend to sell, we have about 69% uh, uh, stake. stake in mm. it currently. Uh, Shell and the rest of them have the remaining shares. OK, if you want to sell, let's say 10% of it. Where, at is, as it is like this, the joint venture agreement with LMPC mm -hmm. is not very clear. You can see a lot of allegation of um, shortfall in remittance and, uh, and what have you. Yes. How are you going to account f as you give them more? You don't even know what they're doing currently. So rather than sell assets, why don't we devise a means of ensuring that what we have is transparent, is accountable, so that more can come into the government coffers as revenue, and we can continue to finance our budget in that way? That is 